Give it up for Lisa. Lisa Johnson, a good woman. A good hardworking woman. Good hardworking woman, guys. We gotta applaud that more. In this nation, come on. All right. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to talk to you guys. Just a couple things about me, we can dive in for a sec. Um, first thing to know, I'm tall. Tall guy, right? I live with it, I walk with it, okay? And yes, I can touch the rim of a basketball hoop. But you know what the better question is? Can I touch your lives, okay? Can I touch your minds, and your hearts, and your souls? All right, answer, also yes, okay? All right, second thing to know about me, I'm a little different, all right? It's, I lived abroad as a child, so I'm a citizen of the world. <laughs> I lived in London, England, jolly London, <laughs> perfect accent. Um, and when I was there, I just started thinking internationally, okay? So it's a bit different. A lot of Americans in the crowd, I would assume. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, you know, so when you guys are, when you're off and you're thinking about like, what's my McDonald's hamburger gonna taste like today? <laughs> oh gosh, to be you. Um, <laughs> What I think about is, what does night smell like in Abu Dhabi? What do children dream of in Japan, right? Where is Mexico? All of these questions run through my head constantly. It's exhausting, honestly. Another thing to know about me, though, is uh, I'm kind of a regular guy, though. At heart, I love sports, all right? I love them. Whether we're kicking a ball, we're punching it, we're throwing it, we're launching it, we're tackling dudes, I'm in. <laughs> so if after the show you want to come up to me and say, Alice, let's just rap about the pigskin for a sec, I'm down. <laughs> Don't be intimidated, it's very exciting. <laughs> All right, I normally, I will say, I normally like to keep it light when I'm on stage, I like to keep it sort of high energy, get the, get the positivity up, get the joy. I will say, inside, there's some hurt. There's some hurt, there's some darkness. You crack this thing open, the demons come out for a second. <laughs> So I have, uh, similar to Whitney, I, I also have a list of things that are, that are not sort of my favorite, okay? And I wanted to, if I can, but you all sort of explore that. Um, I will say, it might get a little real, it might get a little raw, and if it does, don't worry, we're gonna climb on these angel wings, fly right out, okay? <laughs> Just pull this up. You guys remember when I said I was tall? It's right now, I'm living it. Okay. Here we go. This is, uh, I wrote it down because I'm organized. Uh, this is Ellis's list of my not so favorite things. Number one, stepping in gum. Yuck. <laughs> oh, I hate it. Gets on your shoes trying to scrape it off. It's a natural adhesive. That's hard. <laughs> Hopefully, though, you do scrape it off and you keep having a kick butt day. Am I right? <laughs> keep it up. Keep it up. <laughs> Number two, Genocide. Yeah. Whoa. You know, I don't like to say the word hate. I find it to be hateful. Um, but I don't like that. You know. Honestly, can I say something? Maybe it's a hot take. I don't want. I don't want feedback from the crowd. But it's made like, Why is it even legal? You know what I mean? Cut it out. Honestly, two out of ten for me. Number three. Plankton from SpongeBob. He's so mean. He's so mean. And he's trying to steal the Krabby Patty formula. That's not good. That's not what winners do. We don't thieve and we're not mean. Winners find a way. Number four, overcooked chicken, am I right? Oh. It's dry. <laughs> if I go to your house and you serve me overcooked chicken, I'll eat it because I'm respectful of your time and the work that you put in, but I'm not happy. I'm not happy. Here we are. Number five, Racism. Yeah, no, just feels like a big swing and a miss. You know what I mean? It feels like we tried it on, it was a little uncomfy. At, at times, it was a little too comfortable, you know? Let's just toss that in the Goodwill, give it to somebody else, okay? Move it along. Number six, the price of coffee. Am I right? $7 for a latte? Let's walk that back down to four, okay? Not that nonsense. Number seven, the pervasive and constant corruption that is slowly and insidiously corroding our entire governmental democracy. <laughs> I'm actually just gonna let that one speak for itself. That's a thinker. Talk about that in the car. Learn something. God help you. Pass the page. All right. Number eight, 
That is going to be brain freeze. Ouch! <laughs> oh my god, you're tearing into some chunky monkey and your noggin starts bogging? No thank you. <laughs> not for this compadre. Absolutely not. <laughs> I will say though, it does mean you're eating ice cream, which is, what a treat. <laughs> what a treat. Alright, number nine. The crushing loneliness I feel every night as I try to sleep for even a single moment. <laughs> yeah, just... A bit of a bummer, just not good. You know? It's like, what's up with me? But like, but what is, you know? So, if anybody, if anybody is a bit after the show, I'll, I'll be right there. <laughs> Sight unseen. Um, for real though, because I understand that it is comedy, but I'm a human being and I will be outside. So just talk to me. <laughs> Finally, number 10 on my list of not so favorite things, it's green beans. <laughs> okay, yuck. No thanks. They're healthy, so I'll slurp them down if I got them, but they're not my favorite, you know? What is my favorite? The humble carrot. You know, you know why? It's the only vegetable that they make into a cake. I don't want to hear it, zucchini bread. Cut that crap out. Am I right? Cut that crap out. You guys are fun. We're having fun. We're having fun together. Get out of here. All right. That's my list. Um, I will say, though, I can be a little lonesome every once in a while. Uh, I think mainly, I think my expectations are awfully high. You know, I like to believe, I'm just gonna move a little baby purple right there out of the way. Um, but I do think my expectations are high. You know, when I was in high school, I really, I really thought that my life was gonna be like a Justin Long movie. I thought that I was gonna be like Justin Long. And that really tells you about my masculinity in high school, that I thought Justin Long was the peak that you could achieve, but that's what I thought. You know, so I would wander the halls, and I would hope that one day I'd kind of round the corner and I'd, I'd bump into some girl and she'd drop her books and she'd go, oh my god, my books. And I'd go, ah, oh, I'm sorry about that. And we'd lean out and clunk our heads together because we're such goofs. <laughs> and then we'd pick up her books and I'd go, hi, I'm Ellis. And she would have some ridiculous name and she'd be like, hi, I'm Silver. And, you know, we'd go in our separate ways, but the next day, Mr. Lopez's chemistry class, Mr. Lopez was a stickler. Um, she'd come in, and she'd got my new lab partner. And I'd have a cool kind of opening line, I'd be like, drop your books much? <laughs> and we'd laugh, guys, we really would. But then we'd become friends, and we'd banter, and we'd get to know each other, and she'd say things like, you're a dork. And I'd be like, no, you're a dork, and we'd be such dorks. Gosh, what a time it would have been. And then one day she'd be, dating some guy named Bryce, who's on the basketball team, he's a real jerk. And we'd be hanging out, getting our chemistry homework done, and she'd say, oh, Bryce bailed on me again so we can go do alcohol with his cool friends. <laughs> I'd say, oh, classic Bryce. And she'd say, you know, you never told me what you thought of him. I'd go, what does it matter, what do I think? She'd go, no, I wanna hear it, I wanna hear it. And in this moment, I would finally find, find some sort of courage, and I'd say, you know, I think he's a jerk. And I'd back down, I'd be too nervous, but then I'd go again, I'd go, you're the most amazing girl I've ever met in my entire life, Silver. <laughs> you let him walk all over you. You let him treat you like you're crap. And she'd look at me and she'd go, well, maybe I should be more like you. So terrified of getting hurt that I'd close myself off to everyone. And I would, I would run out of there and the fray would be playing and I'd run to the room. And Silver and I wouldn't talk for a little bit. It'd be hard. But a couple of weeks would go by, maybe a month, depending if it's four weeks. And then there'd be the high school dance, the big dance. And I'd be there and I'd have no date and I'd be in a sort of a cool blazer with a loose tie because I'm not like the other guys. <laughs> I'd see Silver standing there and I'd think, God else, couldn't you just have the courage once to say how you feel? And I'd walk over to her on the dance floor and she'd look amazing and I'd say, Silver, I'm, I'm sorry for everything that I said. And she'd go, no, you were right. I found Bryce intercoursing one of the cheerleaders. <laughs> and I'd say, oh, oh, Silver, I'm sorry. And she'd go, you know, my whole life, I, Wanted to be this perfect girl, this perfect daughter, this 
perfect girlfriend. She's got some backstory we honestly do not care about. And then she'd wrap up for whatever speech she was talking about, and I'd say, so Silver, what do you want? She'd say, honestly, I just want to dance with the biggest dork at this whole high school. And we'd dance, and we'd kiss, and it would be amazing. It would be a love story for the ages. In reality, that didn't happen. High school was a lot of playing Settlers of Catan in my friend Daniel's basement. <laughs> and then one of our friends would go, you know, there's a party tonight, right? And we'd all go, oh. And then we keep playing Catan, and then we'd go, well, it's, it's already 10, 15, so we probably missed this one, but the next one, we're going to make it to, guys. And we'd get out there, and we'd live it up. And I think that happens to a lot of people. I think we... We want these big, beautiful gestures all the time. We want our life to be like a movie, and it's, it's often not. I did eventually meet a lovely girl, and it wasn't sort of cinematic or, or, or grand in any way. I just, I met her on a dating app, and we went to a diner to get some sandwiches, and we got to know each other, and we started talking and hanging out and peeling back the layers, and a couple of months went by, and I woke up one day, and I was totally in love, head over here for this girl. And when I came out to Los Angeles, we broke up because she wasn't going to come out to Los Angeles. And I thought that the breakup would be really sort of cinematic as well. I thought it would be like looking out rainy windows and be like, Tis nobler to have loved and lost. But, you know, but it wasn't like that. Mainly because it, it does not rain here. And that was a huge wretched <laughs> But it wasn't like that. It was just kind of gray. You know, it's like your normal life. You're doing everything that you think you're supposed to do. But there's like a lump, you know. And one day I was really struggling with it. And I went to a coffee shop on Melrose, and I had, I had the most LA experience I've ever had. And I'm sitting at a coffee shop, and some song comes on that reminds me of her, and I, it just hit me like a freight train. And I started crying in a coffee shop on Melrose, surrounded by people clapping away on their screenplays. Um, and don't worry, every screenplay was sick. It was all great stuff. But, I started crying, and I was trying to get it together because I realized how embarrassing it was. And then all of a sudden, I noticed that someone had sort of sat down in the chair across from me. And I looked up, and I'm wiping the tears out of my eyes, and I looked up, and not a joke, it is Justin Long. Oh my god! And he's looking at me, and he's like, hey man, you, you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm okay, I'm, I'm just, it's been a hard day. And he goes, someone break your heart? And I said, like, yeah, like, yes, that is what happened. And he goes, Hey man, I promise you, it's gonna be okay. I've been where you are, just keep on going. And I couldn't believe it. It was like my second week in Hollywood, and here was this guy that I tried to be my whole life sitting across me telling me that things were gonna get better. And I say to him, thank you, you've no idea how much that means to me. He goes, oh, don't worry about it. And he walks up, it's a true story. <laughs> he walks up and he walks out of the coffee shop, and he turns back to me and he gives like a little salute, and then he kind of bends his knees, and then he just flew off into the night. <laughs> and he was, he was blown away. And I knew as I watched him flying around the last of the sky that everything was going to be okay. In fact, I swear there are nights if I do start to hurt that I will go out onto my balcony and I look out at the moon, which is where he lives. And I'll think of him up there in the low gravity, surrounded by his MTV Best Kiss Awards. <laughs> and I think, you know what, maybe everything's gonna be okay. All right, I'm Alice Jones, thank you very much.